Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lovely Lavender Wishes. It's Renee, I hope you're having a very blessed day today. And we are continuing on in our Bible journaling in Hosea. Um, this is the whole story about Hosea. God tells Hosea to marry Gomer, who is not a very, very great lady, I would say. Um, you know, she ends up being unfaithful to, to Hosea and um, it's, it's a picture of the unfaithfulness of Israel, but that God still takes Israel back and still loves his people no matter what. And so Hosea was told to act that out in his real life by marrying this lady, Gomer, who was going to be unfaithful to him and end up actually being a prostitute and everything else. And he ends up buying her back and bringing her back in and showing his unfaithful love just like God does for his people. So if you haven't read the book, it's a great book. So anyways, we are going to do just the first page here. Um, I found this picture online and it was on, I just, I just Googled, I don't know, black and white images of ladies and it's actually a drawing by someone. So I looked for copyright. I didn't see any, but just in case I kept their name here, um, Manja, um, drew it 502 in 2000 it looks like so I just I'm gonna keep that on here um, to give credit to for where credit is due because I did not draw this picture I just printed it out um, on sticker paper and I'm not selling this Bible or anything so this is just for my own personal use but I really love this image I just love um, kind of what it portrays and it's like she's kind of hidden you don't really see her true self I think but then you got all this um, fancy stuff around her and I you know I don't know I think sometimes that's kind of how we all hide behind our masks a little bit um but God sees the true person really so I just I don't know for some reason this picture talked to me so thank you for whoever drew this manja thank you thank you um love it love it but anyway so we're gonna do to do this page so this is on clear sticker paper so this is gonna go over this whole page you're gonna see the words through it and all but I wanted to have like a uh, kind of like a really colorful background. Um, so what I ended up doing, we're going to do the smooshing technique, y'all. We've done this before. Um, let me get this over here. So I picked a variety of like reds and yellows and oranges colors. Kind of like because, you know, lady of the night, I guess. Reds. I don't know. <laughs> reds. Um you know, like, I don't know, just, yeah, I just picked a bunch of reds and oranges. So I have some distress inks and an oxide, wild honey, spiced marmalade, fired brick, worn lipstick, barn door, and uh, scattered straw. So I'm just going to use a few of these and we'll see how it goes. And I'll just start layering them up. So y'all know how this works. You've seen me do it before. So just have fun with it. So I am going to squish, squish, squish some ink. I'm gonna go from dark to light on this one, I think. I think, we'll see how it goes. Because I'm gonna start in this corner and I want most of the color to be here and kind of spreading out like that. So let's see how it works. And I've, I'm gonna smoosh it around like this because I want it kind of splattered like that. And I am going to grab, I have my plastic behind here. Always have plastic because it gets messy, y'all. Y'all know that. And you can you can smear it like that and kind of have it whichever direction you want it in. Or if you just want to like smear it like that. But it's kind of like a, I want these colors to kind of be a little commentary, I guess, on her life how messed up it is. So it's kind of like messy and scattered and, you know, kind of searching for things in the wrong way, I guess. Okay, so let's see here. Let's put a few up here, a few over there, put some dots out there. So you can see what I'm kind of, the look I'm kind of going for, like most of it down here and splattered out. So. That should be good for that color. And then we are gonna just add color after color after color. But first I'm gonna dry in between each layer. So they'll um, hopefully pile on top of each other and sit on top of each other and not smear and get muddy. 
the colors. So I'm gonna have to dry this in between each layer. I did prep my page with some gesso because I knew I'd be putting a lot of ink on the page. So we'll see how that goes. I'm also gonna dab some of these puddles up. So it'll dry a little faster. That looks like it's gonna still going through the page a little bit in some areas, but maybe once they dry, it won't be so. do the next layer. I'm going to do some oranges. Let's try orange. Ooh, I like how that looks. On top of that. always a pleasant surprise when you're doing the smooshing technique because <laughs> um, you just never know what you're gonna get so I kind of like that I like the surprise part and I like the layering when it goes on top of each other oops okay it's hard to work when your book is getting so thick. Okay, that should be good for that color. And let's see what this lipstick one looks like. If it's more pink. You know, worn lipstick. It's kind of a good commentary on her life as well. You know. <laughs> she, was, she was getting around there for a little bit. If you read the story. So her lipstick was probably a little worn. Hmm, that might blend in a little too much. Yeah, that looks about almost the same type of color. I'll just do a couple, that's good. Okay, let's dry that and then we'll try another color. We might have to add a contrasting color in here. I don't know, let's see. Let's see, okay, let's dry this real quick. add some purple. For some reason, maybe make it a little darker down here. Purple seems to be calling to me. This kind of reminds me of, you know, Jesus takes our sins and washes them white as snow as well, and that's kind of appropriate for the story. That no matter how far we stray, he is always there for us. He's calling us back and he can wash our sins, our scarlet sins, white as snow. Let's see how that stands on top of it. Some of this yellow. right there okay 
And then I'm gonna try a little bit of this brighter yellow. Whew, this paper towel's getting its use for sure. Ooh, that is some. It's kind of like a scattered straw, yeah. So it's kind of like a yellow brownish yellow. Let's see what that one looks like. I'll just put a few of those down. Yeah, it's almost about the same color. Okay, we're gonna do a contrasting color now. I need a little bit more to this. So let's finish drying this and then we'll add a little bit. I love how that looks so far. Again, like I said, you never know what you're gonna end up with. We gotta put something down here. Some more color right there. Got a big old empty spot right there. My hair is everywhere, y'all. What happens when you have long hair? I shed everywhere. <laughs> I shed. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of this purple down in this and let's see what that looks like. Just a little, we'll do a little just at first to see if it's kind of the look I want or not. So you just add a little bit of water to your ink I need a little darker. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of blending in. It's still wet. Okay, I'm gonna have to dry this corner really well. Otherwise, it's gonna turn into mud. We don't want mud. We don't want brown colors. So we gotta get this really dry. Let's try this again. Let's try it again. You know, if it doesn't turn out the way you want it, just always just try again. And it might not turn out exactly the purple that I want, but it's still gonna give it a little bit darker. Some darker splotches. Hmm. Let's try. Round two, let's try, let's see. I've got this purple, let's see what this would look like. Grape jelly, whoa, that might be better. Let's try if it's water. I haven't tried this type of ink on this yet, so let's see, well, that might work. Oh yeah, it's a little bit more purpley. Still can. Okay, and that's, I think, all I'm gonna leave. Because if I keep going, it'll turn into more mud colors, and I don't want that. But let's do, maybe I can do a few in some blank spots, and then it won't be so, it won't mess, mix with the paint. It looks like it's already mixing with the paint here. Let's try again. Let's do this side. Not as vibrant as I wanted, but it's okay. Okay, let's move all this. Okay, before we can stick this sticker on, we have to make sure this is completely dry.
when I dry the back, because sometimes it helps to dry the back. Make sure it's dry all the way through, front and back. Looks like some of this ink. Here, if I can show you on camera, you can see right up here. Some of it soaked through to the other side. That's okay. That'll give me some cool background for that side, that page. Or I can cover it with stickers or whatever. Okay, almost a, a little damp. It's almost dry. A couple spots. dry making sure okay okay so there's all our splatters okay now this is gonna be the tricky part <laughs> let's get this flat I might have to put something under here let me see I got this stamp let's see if I put that there for now to kind of hold this up a little bit okay so the tricky part is okay I got this part so if I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this in stages here. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna just oh, rip that part off, the back backing, and try to figure out where exactly I want this. Where do I want her? We'll have her right here. So once you stick these down, they're pretty much stuck. So okay, <laughs> there's that part, and then now I'm just gonna. Pull this and if I can get it, there we go. And we'll, little by little, just kind of smooth her over. And there you go, just like that. You could still read the words through it. I mean, it's a little bit difficult in some areas, but you could still read the words through it. You have Hosea here. And then you've got these coming through. That's pretty cool. Looks like you colored it, but you didn't. <laughs> okay, and then on this side, what I'm going to do is, since Hosea's name's here, I'm gonna put Gomer's name over on this side, just with these stencils. But see, look at, with some smooshing techniques, some ink, you can, you can cover a whole page really quickly with a little bit of no, no muss, no fuss. Okay, so now let me, I'm gonna open up my Bible here and move this, throw this away. I'll wipe all this off. Okay, I'm gonna, can you all see what I'm doing here? <laughs> okay, so what I am going to do, bring this close to me, and I'm gonna write in pencil Gomer's name along the side. And I'm gonna go backwards because I want her name to be down here by the edge. So I'm gonna, just with pencil, G-O-M-E-R, right? Is that how you spell her name? Just making sure, G-O-M-E-R, yes. I like using stencils because then I don't have to worry about my writing my printing or my, you know, and then I can just kind of go in and color and you don't really have to think. You just gotta make sure you're spelling everything correctly, but you don't have to think too much. <laughs> Geo. And I'm trying to see where the M ends. And I do it in pencil first, just in case it's like totally cattywampus and I have to go back in and erase and get it a little bit straighter. I'm following the line of this, which helps the line of the sticker. So that helps me. That's giving me a little like plumb line to follow. There we go, Gomer. So now I am going to take some of my colored pencils here and I just grabbed all the red ones. I finally organized my colored pencils, y'all, into, I let's see. All my um, 
you can see this, all my uh, Prismacolor pencils, I organized, I got rid of like multiple colors. I had multiples of some. Um, and then I just grouped them in like, here's all the reds, here's the browns, you know, here's the blues for instance. And I just, you know, I just grouped them or here's the dark blues and I have light blues cause I had so many. So I just grouped them and put them in rubber bands. So that way, if I know like I want a red, I can just grab the reds and I can see all the different kinds of reds I have. I just had so many that it was getting really hard to find. So I have my blending tools here, my whites and blacks here, you know, my yellows here. So I just found that this makes it a lot easier for me to find what I am looking for. So that's just another organizing tip for those who are trying to organize your colored pencils. I used to have them in the Prismacolor box, but then, um, you know, they'd get all mixed up even in the box. So this way, I just, it was just easy for me. Okay, I like this really dark brown red. It's actually a Ruse Tucson, Tucson red. Tucson, Tuscan, Tuscan red. Gosh, y'all, I, I, I need better glasses. Tuscan red. So it's like a darker red. And I liked that. And actually, let's do a red and then I'll do the dark over it. Because... I told you all in one of my previous videos that when you are coloring with colored pencils, you usually, to get dimension, you don't want to have just one color. You always want to um, blend at least two colors together, at least. Um, and for lettering, I like doing maybe like, I'll have it darker at the bottom and it'll fade as it goes up. But by blending the colors, you get um, just a little bit more dimension to it. I'm gonna grab my blender pencil. And when you use it, it gets rid of all those lines and it just makes it really smooth. You don't have to have one of these, but it's just, it's just fun to watch it work. You could also outline this. I might outline it in black to have it stand out because Jose's name is in black, and but I liked red for her for some reason. Kind of goes with the page too with all the reds. So yeah, sometimes I love to just color with colored pencils and not think. I don't know if y'all have those adult um, coloring books. I've got so many of them. And I just love um, sometimes just putting on some music and uh, just coloring, not thinking, not having to think about drawing or what I'm going to put on the page or anything because it's already there. They already have um, pictures for you to color so you can be brain dead and just just color. Be a kid again. If, if you guys haven't tried that, I mean, I've had so many people say they haven't tried a lot of these techniques or they're afraid to start collaging or they're afraid to start a multimedia page or they're afraid to start in their Bible or, or just even start a junk journal for themselves. You know, it doesn't even have to be like one of those really um, intricate junk journals. It could just be, you know, a prayer journal for yourself or a diary or or something and just just cut out pictures and glue them in make it a glue book or some people who have been afraid to start a napkin journal or just so many things y'all don't be afraid just start it doesn't matter what it looks like it doesn't it's it's yours it's yours it's your creativity it doesn't there's no such thing as perfect there's no such thing as how it's supposed to look like I get a lot of people for even this who will text me and they'll they'll ask me like well, what are the materials you are using or this or that? And it's not about that. You don't need to go out and buy anything, y'all. You don't have to print out the same exact picture I have. Um, I'm just showing you like something that spoke. It's just something that spoke to me. Find something that speaks to you and and um, and just create with that. What, what speaks to me probably doesn't speak to you or to, you know, to everybody. I know for sure it doesn't speak to everybody. My style is not your style. So these are just ideas for you. I just show you what I do. I show you some techniques. 
So then you can go and get creative on your own and maybe try something. And the best part of it is all, y'all have to try it. I had to try it all at 1.2 for the first time and it is scary, but you gotta kinda jump out there and just do it. And you never know, you might find something that you truly, truly love to do. Um, you know, you might hate working with color pencils. Okay, then don't work with color pencils. You might love gelatos. Other people might hate gelatos and they love colored pencils. Or some people just like to use pen and ink in their Bible. Other people like to use paint. You know, um, just find what works for you and, and, and play with it. And, and then try something new every once in a while. I just say jump out. We only live once, y'all. And our lives go by so fast. Don't live it with regrets. Don't look back on your life and say, oh, I wish I would have tried that. Or I wish, you know, I felt like God was telling me I should have jumped out and done it and I didn't. Or, you know, you don't want to live like that. So my whole thing is just try it. You, you won't know until you try it. And you can't ruin it. You, you can't ruin it. So... That's my, my advice for the day. Because I will say, um, this year was quite a year for me, trying a lot of new things and just jumping out in faith. And um, oh, my, my, sh my elbow here keeps sliding on this table, y'all, and it's messing me up. So, uh, but yeah, this year was a year of trying new things. And I'm so glad I did because it's opened up I don't know, just it's opened me up to some new experiences, some some new things that I found that I truly love to do, all that. So anyways, okay, so I'm done with the blending tool, so I'm going to put that back. I'm done with this red one, both these red ones actually, and then I am going to grab my black pencil. Let's see. And this is a little tool. Some people have asked what this is. This is a little tool that if your pencil, look at that, gets super tiny and you can't hold it anymore, this is a tool that's got these um, little uh, holders on the end and you can tighten them up and you put your pencil in there and it extends your pencil for you. So you can use your pencil until it's down to the very, very nib, especially with these uh, Prismacolor pencils because they do get expensive. And you want to use them until they're pretty much, you know, totally, totally gone. So that's, I love this little tool. Um, I don't know where I got it. You could probably get it from any craft store, maybe even Amazon. Um, it's, I think it would be called maybe like a pencil extender, something like that. That's what I call it. Um. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think if there's another name for it. Maybe if you Google pencil extender, maybe the, the true name will come up for it. So now I'm just outlining this in black to kind of make it stand out. I probably should do it in black pen. But now I already started this, so I'll just keep it in black pencil. Black pen probably would have stood out even more. Well, it definitely would have stood out even more, I'm sure. I keep hitting a little. Woo! And it's super hard here on the very end because I have nowhere to rest my hand to keep it steady. Got to try to grip the pencil in a weird way and press hard at the same time. Oh, there we go. So there is our page. So let's turn it right side out, right side around for y'all. So here's Hosea up here and I got Gomer down here. So here's a close up. I had fun doing that one, that was fun. I love the smooshing technique. That is so fun to do. <laughs> um, so this was my page that I've done Previously, I did not have a, um, figured I'd show it to you since it's open. I did not have a, a 
Bible journal with me with this one. All it is is stickers. I just printed, um, I think this was from an open journey set. I think, I can't remember. I did this one last April. Um, his wild love calls me to the desert and it's just stickers. So it was all just stickers. And then I made a little, um, little paper clip with some sorry silk here at the top that I just tied on. That was it. So nothing very, you know, difficult to do. You can just print some images on stickers and put that on your page. But here's our two pictures for Hosea. So thank you all so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video. Have a very blessed day. Bye.